So far, we've translated BRD and MCM files from Cadence Allegro tools to ANSYS. Now we'll see how to convert ECAD databases from the ODB++ format to ANSYS. ODB++ is a widely used CAD-CAM interchange format. Some popular layout tools that generate ODB++ files are listed here. This video features translation from LTM Designer to ANSYS. LTM Designer is an EDA, or Electronic Design Automation, software package that's often used for creating PCB layouts. These PCB virtual prototypes were created in LTM Designer, version R16.1. The small breakout board, shown here on the right, can be merged with the main printed circuit board on the left. These boards are used in a Wi-Fi-enabled consumer electronics device. We'll translate these boards from LTM Designer 16.1 to an ODB++ format, and then import them into ANSYS SI Wave. Before you begin, be sure you know the location of your board database, because after translation the ODB++ folder is generated in the same directory. The file type of this board is LTM PCB document. We'll import the main board first. Open LTM Designer. Drag and drop the PCB document into LTM. The file opens in LTM's PCB editor in the board planning mode. Change the view to 3D layout mode. This mode helps you see the board and its components clearly. Use the shortcut keys to adjust the view of your board. Press the control key and roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Press the hotkeys V and F to fit the board. Place the cursor at the center of the window and press the hotkeys V and B to flip the board so that it turns around its center. If you place the cursor in the corner, the rotation axis shifts to the corner. For our workflow from LTM to ANSYS, We'll first review the layers that make up this board and their material properties. Then we'll convert the board to an ODB++ directory and import this ODB++ directory to ANSYS SI Wave. Finally, we'll compare the Layer Stackup Editor in SI Wave to the Layer Stack Manager in Altium. The Layer Stack Manager can be accessed from the Design menu under Layer Stack Manager. This dialog gives you information about the layers that are configured on this board. The ones of interest for us are the top layer, plane 1, plane 2, and the bottom layer. We'll export only these four layers. These layers have the same thickness of 1.4 mils. Dielectric 1 and 3 are 3.5 mils thick, whereas dielectric 2 is 50 mils thick. The signal layers and the planes are made of copper. The dielectric layers are assigned to be FR4. Core has copper on both sides and dielectric in the middle. Prepreg, or pre-impregnated, has only FR4. Pullback is the distance between the board edge and the copper plane all around the board. For each of the internal planes, the pullback value has been defined to 20 mils. Close the dialog now. This field displays the path where the board is located. Maneuver the board to place it in the viewing window as you like. Now it's important to understand that LTM offers several different options for exporting ODB++. To translate this board accurately for ANSYS tools, you should only use the Fabrication Outputs option. Steer clear of the other export options that are available in LTM Designer. For example, the File Export route provides some other options. Avoid this route. To generate the ODB++ directory accurately, first go to the File menu, Fabrication Outputs, ODB++ Files. This command opens the ODB++ Setup dialog. There are multiple layers displayed in this dialog. For simulation purposes, we require only the physical layers that have the nets and the ground planes. We need to export the top, bottom, plane 1, and plane 2 layers. And these layers are actually selected by default. Deselect the remaining layers. If you want, you can include the unconnected mid-layer pads. These are pads that remain in the ground plane. They're generally removed during the manufacturing process since no signal line is connected to them. Click OK to export this PCB to an ODB++ directory. The ODB++ directory is immediately created in the same location where the board file resides. The ODB++ translation operation also opens up Camtastic, which is Altium's CAM editor used for viewing and editing manufacturing data. Camtastic offers some export options as well, one of them being ODB++. Do not use this export method in Camtastic. Remember, the ODB++ export route we want to use is in the File Fabrication Outputs menu within the Active PCB document. Open the ODB++ directory. ODB++ is a PCB fabrication database. It has many folders, 
fonts, input, matrix, steps, etc. Data related to conductors, solder masks, silk screens, and drills are located in the Layers section under the Steps folder. The Matrix folder has a matrix file with a stack up. Netlists and CADNet contain electrical information about circuit connectivity. Additional EDA style netlists are placed in the EDA folder. Note that this data is unique to each PCB layout design tool. In the case of Altium Designer, it's very important that you use version R, 10, or higher so that this PCB EDA folder is created. This folder contains information about netlists and passive components that are needed for SI Wave. We can import this ODB directory into ANSYS SI Wave. Launch SI Wave now. This will present you with a dialog to import the desired ECAD file type. Or you can go to the Import tab. Select ODB. For this board, our ODB archive type should be set to Directory. Enter the correct file path in the ODB design field. Click Browse, navigate to the ODB directory, and select it. Press the Select Folder button. Now click the Import button. This opens the Select Nets to Import from PCB dialog. You can select all the nets or just the ones you want. We'll select all of them. The ODB directory is translated and the board appears in SI Wave along with the workflow wizard. This wizard lists the steps that you can follow to simulate the board. For now, just close this dialog. All the workspaces are hidden in SI Wave. Let's reveal the Layers workspace. In the Layers panel, hide all the layers. I'll make the vias visible and the circuit elements and the paths. Go to the Home tab and enter the Rectangle Selection mode. Drag your mouse and select all the components. Now make all the layers visible. I'm doing these operations just to visualize the board and its components clearly. Close the Layers panel for now. You can press Ctrl-L to open the Layer Stack Up Editor, or simply click the Stack Up option from the ribbon. We'll compare the stack ups between ANSYS SI Wave and Altium Designer. Change the units to mils to be consistent with Altium. Remember, we exported only the signal layers and planes to ODB++ from Altium. These layers are present in SI Wave with copper as their material. SI Wave automatically builds the dielectric layers based on the elevation and the thicknesses of the signal layers. Their material is FR4. The layer thicknesses and material names are consistent for the board across ANSYS and Altium. Notice that some material properties, such as the dielectric constant, are not the same. This is because SI Wave has mapped the FR4 material named in the ODB file to the FR4 properties in its own internal database. It's a good practice to review the stack up after translation, as we're doing now, and make any necessary adjustments. Before we conclude Part 8, remember to use the File Fabrication Outputs route in Altium Designer, version R10 or higher, to generate the ODB directory and import it into ANSYS SI Wave. Watch Part 9 to learn more about translation from Altium to ANSYS.